Hello and welcome back. It's puzzle time with Sudoku Sleuth and we've got yet another phenomenal puzzle for you today. Now you can see from the thumbnail here it says don't mess with snakes and I, I don't know what's the obsession of constructors with snakes when it comes to Sudoku but I think that's the second puzzle I've come across where snakes feature heavily as part of the puzzle. There was one I remember where essentially the snake had gobbled up pi, as in the number pi, and using the first handful of digits from pi is actually sort of part of the solution. But yeah, um, as someone who's grown up in a desert environment where there are plenty of snakes, I can tell you, I don't mess with snakes. You just learn that very quickly. Not through bitter experience, mind you. I just thought, yeah, not something that I want to come near it. But let's take a look at the puzzle that we have for today. And we've got Don't Mess With A Sharp End by Will Power. And um, Will Power, as usual, continues to amaze everyone by drawing a snake, as you can see, curled up there in this uh, grey line, which I believe in the rules confirms is a palindrome. And you can see that the fangs are there, um, bared, ready to strike. And the advice is don't mess with the sharp end. I absolutely agree, Willpower. Now let's take a look at the rule sets that we have here. So normal Sudoku rules apply. So the digits one to nine in every row, every column and every three by three box. Fantastic. The snake is a palindrome. So the end cell away from both ends are the same as one another. So essentially that's the tail, that's the head. And essentially these two digits, which I'm gonna color would be the same and so on and so forth. So continue all the way around the snake until you meet somewhere in the middle, probably in its stomach somewhere, uh, a place you probably don't want to ever be inside a snake. Uh, numbers in cages, sum to 13. We've got many of them throughout the puzzle, pardon me. And essentially it's saying the two cells that are highlighted in the cage sum up to 13. So this digit and this digit will add up to 13. Numbers with white dots between them are consecutive. We've got many, you can see throughout here. And numbers with a black dot between them are in a ratio of two to one. And again, we've got quite a few of them here as well. Not all possible dots are given. Numbers with a V between them sum to five. Only a handful, just the three of them. And not all possible Vs are given. So, um, no negative constraints as far as I could tell today at all. And it just finishes up with something ominous. Are you feeling lucky? Well, lucky enough to give the puzzle a go, but absolutely not lucky enough to come anywhere near a snake. Uh, and that feels like universal advice that anybody should be sort of receiving and giving. Um, for those of you that are brave enough and handle snakes day to day, well done. I'm not gonna count myself amongst you anytime soon. Well, if you wanna play along, if you wanna feel lucky, and you want to mess with this um, hypothetical snake from a safe distance. You can play in the, with the link down in the description down below as per usual. And with that said, let's restart the clock and see how we all get on. So I'm immediately drawn to this crop key dot set. Just because, you know, we've got three of them. So if you remember, Black crop key dots can only be made up of one, two, three, four, six, and eight. Um, but they essentially come in pairs of either three, six, which are distinct from everything else, or it could be one, two, or eight, and any pair of them will do. But if you end up ever with a box where box, column, row, anything that enforces uniqueness, where there's three of them in a row, one, two, three, then you clearly know it's not the three, six. It has to be from one, two, four, and eight. And the center cell has to be two, four. Surrounded by one, two, four, and eight. Although I, just as I was pencil marking this, I can see immediately that one is nonsense here because that's a 13 cage. One means that's a 12. Two means that's 11 both of which are nonsense, so that's 4, 8. And that actually tells us kind of the order of this three-cell run of black crop key dots. 
because essentially it's either 842 or 421. And the, therefore this 12 is either 12 or 4. And we have digits on our palindrome. You can immediately see that's not a 4 because they have to be contiguous um, with the white crop key dot. So that's not a 4 in here. So that's 12. So essentially it's a run of 8421. 4212. Yeah, that's possible as well. Not a problem. Right, the 4 and 8 means that's either a 5 with the 8 or a 9 with the 4. The 4 has to be in here between these two, so there's no 4, 9 in there. Because essentially it's either 842 or 421. In either scenario, 4 is up there. I'm just going to corner pencil mark this. I don't necessarily need it. But that means this is from 5, 8 or 6, 7. Um, I will probably color some of these in a in a moment. But actually, I'm just looking at this white crop key dot. It's led me to look at box six, and you can see we've got 13, 13, and 13. That's 39, meaning we're left with only six to get to 45. That's fixed. That's one, two, and three. It's even more fixed because, as we've looked at earlier here, in a 13 cage, we can't have 1, 2, or 3. It's got to be 4 or higher. So that's the 4 that has that to add up to 5. So that's the 1. These are not 1. That's a 9. And we can continue. That's 5, 8, 4, 2, and 1. So that's 1, 2... We've got uh, five, six, seven, eight, and a blank, and then a four, a one, and a two, eight. Um, you're going to see me sort of bouncing around from either end of the palindrome regularly, probably for a while, just to sort of stay on top of it. That's not an eight, therefore that's not a five, and that's not an eight. I will color code them. It's just with such a lengthy palindrome, I'll lose track of colors. So I want to color some of these cells sparingly rather than just up front you can see one is not in this row one is here in fact i have a five eight i don't know why i spotted that a very strange way there that's therefore that's a six seven pair and that's a six seven down here we need a nine that's got to go in there just normal sudoku and that's a three two three fantastic um, this 9 is just before the 4. We placed a 3. I'm going to struggle to spot later on, but I feel like I'm, I'm tempted to leave it for now. I'll come back to it. I'm just going to highlight it as something that I need to place. Um, 6 and 7. You can see 8 is not an option. This is therefore 5, 6, or 7, which means this is 6 or 7 or 8. 9 and 4 are not available. This is a 5, 8, or 6, 7. Yeah, and then we'd know the 8, 5 order. That's okay. Interesting. Maybe I do need to take a look at the palindrome a bit more. It feels a bit early to be stuck, actually. Um... Let's do a bit of Sudoku though. So one is not here because of this one. One is not there because of this one. One cannot be in the 13 case. This is a 1-4 pair and we know the order of that. That's one. That's four. We can finish this off with five, sorry, eight, six, and seven. And therefore this is five, six, or seven again. Interesting. And this one we should be able to place. That's a two. And therefore we have nine in here somewhere with a three and then one from the remaining digits, whatever that may be. Um, am I going to corner pencil mark these? Is that useful? 
I don't know if it is really. Um, let's see if we can place the three because I think we are going to have to get onto the palindrome. So this four and this four. So we've got one, two, three, four, five cells between them. One, two, three, four, five cells between them. That's a four. That's another two and eight. That's got to be eight. There's no way we're going to place a two inside a um, 13 cage. Five, two, eight. And then this three is one, two digits apart. So one, oh, actually we placed this four. That's four, therefore that's an eight. That's not eight, certainly not nine. I just placed back, not five. That's a six, seven pair. Therefore that's six or seven. That's got to be six. That's three. That's six, that's seven. And I'm, I'll be honest with you, I'm kind of, done um, counting. So here are some colors. Yep. Yep. And what else do we need to earmark? So after the three, I don't know what this is, but yeah, red. See, that's why I didn't really want to color it, because I don't really want to go down this route of um, using a whole bunch of colors. Just makes it a little bit harder to see everything. Uh, same of that logic. Ones are not here. One cannot be in a 13 cage. That's a one, two pair, which is one cell away from red, one cell away from red, that's a one, two pair here. This one tells us a lot of things. That's a two, that's a one, that's a two, that's a one. To finish off, we've got five, six, and seven in here. Not six. Not six. Not six. That's a, therefore, six with a seven, eight with a five. Um... Got anything else? Yeah, let's take a look at blue and green. So this is not nine four. This is not six seven. This is a five eight pair. That adds up to thirteen. And therefore, there's a five eight pair in here. Now, if this is five, that's going four three. If this is eight, C seven is not available, so it's going nine ten. That's a five, four, three, because again, yeah, six is not available. Therefore, that's the five, that's the eight, five, not six, eight. We need to place seven and nine. That's not the nine, that's the nine, that's the seven. We're very nearly done with the palindrome, actually. So we've got two and six to place. That's the six, the two, six in here. What's... What are these digits? That's a seven, seven, six. Tells us this is the order of this, eight and five. That's got to be a six to be contiguous with five and seven. Um, that's six, five, eight. This could be nine, no, it can't be nine, four. That's a seven, six, not five. Um, do we know yellow and orange? Not yet, but we will momentarily, I'm sure. We still need to place three and nine in the row. Surprisingly, we don't know how to disambiguate this yet. We need to place three, four, and nine. That's four or nine. That's three, four, nine. In here, we need three, nine, and seven. Incredibly, all are available. Well, maybe the palindrome will help because seven is not available, three is not available. That's a nine. Excuse me, nine, not eight. Nine, three, three, seven. None of these are nine, so that's a four. 
we designed to finish box five. We need to finish box eight. Let's finish off. We've got seven, seven, five in here. And nine, we can finish off box seven fairly cleanly. Five, three, seven. Only one box left to go. So we've got one, two, and six. This is a four, eight pair. Eight tells us the order. And to finish the column, we need a three. Where does one go in here? One goes there. Two goes in here. Three, four. Where is five? That is where I am. Six, seven, and if I've not made any mistakes, nine. And that's a solution to Will's puzzle. Don't mess with the sharp end. I mean, it's a fairly straight forward puzzle. I think, you know, the usual break-in of spotting black Kropke dots that are threes, you can immediately start to pencil mark a few things. The cages being 13 and just the restrictions on 1, 2, and 3 that we have either in box 3 as well as box 6 just gets you going. And then just staying on top of the palindrome. So um, immensely enjoyable puzzle. I mean, I love palindromes that are this size because you end up having to use logic from different boxes. Not a very standard way of doing um, Sudoku. But it's just a way of just having to hop around to be able to actually determine, for example, that was the seven. Um, sorry, that was a nine because, you know, three and seven were not available and therefore that's a nine. And I just love that sort of interactions across boxes. Well, I hope you enjoyed today's puzzle as much as I have. Um, comments, as always, um, really enjoyable to read. And with that said, see you back for the next video. Bye for now.